Set this up to press the bearing out of the intermediate plate. It's a piece of uh, pipe, the standard uh, standard galvanized pipe. It's uh, about an inch and seven eighths outside. Push the bearing most of the way out. Should be able to tap this to get it the rest of the way. That's the uh, the upper inner input shaft bearing. This is the one that goes bad when you lose your oil. And oil can't get up to the highest part of the transmission. So when you start up your car and you, you have a noise coming out of your transmission, you push in the clutch and it goes quiet. That's probably it right there. I want to get this bearing out of here. This is the front of the transmission. The counter shaft bearing. I'm going to push it. Uh, we're going to push it from the back side, inside out. But I'm going to heat up around here, warm up the aluminum to expand it. Hopefully, it'll come out of there. Okay, heated up the intermediate plate. The spacer on there. Yeah, that seems to work. I use this, it's just the exact diameter for getting that bearing out. It's some sort of a, you put it on a shaft, tighten down the thing, and it holds things in place. I forget what they call them. I just press this bearing out of the intermediate plate. Inter intermediate plate. This is the inside of the transmission, and on this bearing, this lip around the edge is just a little bit thinner in thickness than this side, which so the thick the thicker side goes to the outside of the transmission, and the thin side goes to the inside. I toss the intermediate plate on the oven for a while, and then I put some Molly lube in there. Just make sure you put it with the lip just notch. Up. I've had trouble getting this bearing in in the past.
reason I do it that way, very carefully go around with this large punch because I had trouble in the past getting these in by pressing them because the bearing is so big for the narrow sides that it tends to tilt as it's going in. It gets wedged in there and, and it wrecks the case if you force it too much. So I found that just gently tapping it after you've heated this up, get it nice and warm, you can get it down in there. And as you're tapping it and you get down low, you can eyeball it. Make sure you're tapping in the right spot so that it never gets cockeyed. And then when the when the sound of it bottoming out, you can tell by the tone of your hit that it's bottomed out. Anyway, that's the uh, inner input shaft bearing. And then you put this on, this 12 millimeter. That's what holds it in place. This bearing, if you look carefully along the edge, one side is a little bit narrower than the other. This lip. And the thicker, thicker lip goes to the, the outside of the transmission. The thinner lip goes to the inside of the transmission. Okay, I press that bearing in. I set up some reinforcement under there and I set this on top of the bearing which is oversized and I put the jack in there and anyway I got it to go down there real smooth I preheated the plate with the propane torch around here and I kept the bearing cool you remember to put the small lip that way, the big lip on this side of the bearing. Before I put this plate together, I like to warm up. Get the, me the, the aluminum expand a little bit, makes the bearings go in easier. We need to put the snap rings on these two bearings. Put this plate on here. This is the assembly, so kind of put all these together. Um, third, fourth gear, shift fork, first, second shift fork, reverse. I go ahead and push the shaft. Top shaft in, so it's sticking out just a little bit on the far side. And when it's out, lined up about, that's about when you can get that screw in there. Now this one here, I'm going to put the uh, interlock key in. I'll 
hold it up with the screwdriver and I can push the second shaft in. I don't want to push it in all the way. Just enough so I can still get the little Okay, I'm going to stick a screwdriver in here in the second hole and just hold that, that thing up a little bit so I can pull the middle shaft out just a little bit. Now I can slip this little one. Okay, I put the little one in the hole on that shaft while it's horizontal when I'm holding up the key I can push it in horizontal <clears throat> and now rotate it vertical once it's in there a little ways until it's just barely sticking out the back It's easier to do this if you lay it on the workbench and tip this thing upside down. You don't have to worry about all that aspect. And I'm going to put the reverse and fifth gear shift fork goes on the bottom. I put the three on all three of these four or shift rods. The three things go on this side. Got it in there a little ways. Which is barely hanging. And I'm gonna reach in there and put that in and hold it up with the screwdriver. Pull the magnet off, push it up with the screwdriver. I can slide the shaft in. And you want to line up the, this is the small slot, the big slot. Just push it in until you can slip it inside this right here. that bolt in the shift fork. I'll tell if they're in right. When this one is, see that groove right there? Put back so the groove's on the other side. And these should only move back and forth a little bit. So they just stick out little ways and then if you move that in so the groove is about where the interlock is it allow these to move a little further but when you do that it's going to shift shift the gear as long as these bolts are in there so I'm just going to take the bolt out both of them that way I can slide the shaft back and forth to make sure everything's working right Okay, now uh, this one, so the notch is in there. Now I can move. There. That one will move. And then the second one will move when that one's back in position. But when you got this one out, this one can't, top one can't move, the bottom one can't move. You line it, push it back in a little ways. And when that one's out, the second one won't move, 
bottom one won't move. And then when the bottom one's moved over, the top two won't move. That's about all I know about those things. Tighten these down with a 10 millimeter. They're pretty tight. You don't want to over tighten them. All right. Now we got to get this case fixed up.